Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Good morning. Um, welcome to God's house, uh, to your family, to the body of Christ. Um, I'm welcoming you today with peace. I pray that this morning you would experience the peace, not as the world gives, but as Christ gives to you. Uh, so let's uh, enter into the spirit of peace as we pray. Jesus, we need your peace this morning. Jesus, give us that peace that brought you through so much, God. You are the Prince of Peace, and we need you this morning. Thank you for our ability to worship together, and we ask that you would help us to feel your presence near. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's uh, start with Jesus, lover of my soul, uh, hymn 710. Thank you. 
Amen. I love that line. You may be seated. Oh, let's let's do the affirmation of faith while we're standing, actually. But I love that line, uh, hide me, God, um, until the storms of life pass. It's beautiful. Let's say together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. All right, my favorite part of the sermon, uh, the service, the joys and concerns. You heard my daughter singing. She's practicing singing, yeah. And if you give waves to her, she might actually wave. She started doing that yesterday. Um, what uh, joys and concerns do we have? And is anyone brave enough to come to the mic? Gonna keep asking. No, no right? Maybe. Uh, joys and concerns. Oh, amen. That's great. Wonderful. So John did well. Anybody else? Yes. Anna? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. For the, for the, for Dick and for the entire Kelso family, um, we're definitely uh, lifting them up in prayer. Thank you. Anybody else? Any joys or concerns? All right, let's pray. That's those are two. Those are two big ones. God, we come before you, knowing that we need you this morning. We thank you for John's success, God, for for that small victory, God. Um, and we pray, Lord, uh, with heavy hearts today, uh, because one of our um, members, one of our parts of our body, is is aching, is hurting. Uh, and we feel for them, God. So we pray for we pray for Dick, uh, what he's going through right now. Um, just be his comfort, God. Please be close to him, God. Lord, um, yes, God, we pray for Glenn, God. Be close to him, God. Lord, find some way to comfort um, our our beloved, God. Um, we pray for Pat, God, that that you hold her spirit, um, that you embrace her. Now that she's reunited with her mom, um, Lord, just just be with Pat, God, and pray for the Kelso family, God. Lord, um, probably feels like they don't know how they're gonna get through this, but God, we know that some way, some way, you're gonna bring them through. Help them to know that they have a family in us, that we love them and support them, um, and help us to find some way through the Holy Spirit to show our love, to show our support. Uh, but God, ultimately, we just ask that you uh, would send the Holy Spirit, that Jesus, you would be walking beside them on every step of the hard journey in the next few years. Be with them, God. Please, Lord, our hearts go out. And we pray for peace uh, for the family and for everyone here. Again, uh, this morning, we need your peace. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Amen. Um, I want to invite you all uh, to offer of yourselves. Um, if you uh, notice there's a box over there, you can put your tithes in. Um, you can also offer yourselves uh, later on, uh, just thinking about what kind of gifts you have, uh, bringing your full self. Um, so we, we're not passing around the plate, but I do want to invite you to bring everything you have to God. Uh, let's sing now the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise 
praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. And I ask that you would please stay standing as we do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Be to God. We are the body of Christ. The body, beautifully and beautifully and wonderfully interconnected. Different parts for different functions, but every part essential and needed. With our own bodies, we don't often think about our body parts until they malfunction, until something goes wrong, right? One time I sprained my ankle jumping up and down in all places uh, for a worship service. Uh, I was playing guitar and got excited, and I came down on an extension cord and just twisted the ankle. And I never thought about my ankle before then, but after that I thought for two or three weeks, four weeks, about how difficult it was to have a sprained ankle. It's almost unbearable when part of our body doesn't have its counterpart. The right hand needs the left hand. The right foot needs the left foot. And with just one ankle working, I was a mess. I bring this up today in today's scripture because the Apostle Paul is very concerned with the unity of the body. In Ephesians 4, which I actually just read, verse 3 uh, Paul asked the church of Ephesus to make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, Paul says, and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. We are one. There is a holy oneness about the church, you and all Christians today gathering. There's a holy oneness that Paul is trying to preserve 
there is a holy oneness in the natural body, too, that God gave each one of us, and in the spiritual body of Jesus Christ our Savior. We need to do everything we can today and every week to stay one, to stay unified, to stay together. That's not always easy, though, especially um, it's hard when a person who has a very different view from you is part of your body. It's hard to be with a person who sees things differently and really disagrees. But is it worth trying is the question. People who know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior are called Christians. And what does it say to people who don't know Jesus if all Christians are infighting and, and are, are not jointed? Also, we have to be doing the work of Jesus in this region. But how can we get anything done? How can we have ministries uh, for people to bring them to Christ if we're not unified? I think it's worth trying to be unified, even though it's hard, trying to be one. I think it makes sense if we want to be effective in this world, and I think it's what Jesus was thinking about when Jesus prayed that we might be one just as uh, God and Jesus are one. Whether or not we act like one, we are actually one. There's no getting around it. If my ankle wants to go off and jump and get itself sprained, well, it's going to affect the rest of my body. And the rest of my body is actually going to be taking care of it. We are one, whether or not we like it. We try to draw divisions between us, but we really can't divide what God has made together. God was the one that formed us in our mother's womb. And God, through Jesus giving uh, Jesus uh, for us, made us one, formed us together. Paul says that we share one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. We think we have options of how we'll be in this family, but we don't because there is one God. And God is one, and so if we want to be with God, we also have to be one. This is the gospel message for us today. Before, you and I were not a people, but Jesus has given his body so that we could be one body. And this is such good news before, you were disconnected, isolated, and alone. Now you have one another. Now you are part of this beautiful, beautiful body. Turn to your left and smile at your neighbor. Go ahead. You and them belong to each other. That's good. If you all want to just look at each other from now on, that'd be great. Don't, don't even look up here. That'd be nice. But you and, you, and, you and that person on the left belong to each other. You are part of a body together. Turn to the right and smile to them. There we go. Jesus has done a beautiful thing because you and that person to the right were made for each other to be one body, the body of Christ. Their pain is your pain. I'm going to say that again. Their pain is your pain. Their joy is your joy. Love them like you love yourself. Jesus has made you one body. But, okay, the difficulty is, how can we stay one unified body if we are so different? The Apostle Paul helps us with this in the scripture. He tells us in verse 2 to be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Let's break this up because I think there's a lot of good meat in here. If we're going to unite, even though we're different, we have to be humble, gentle, patient, and bear with one another. These are all kind words. They are not big and strong and force another person our way or the highway. Paul tells us to be humble and gentle, patient, bearing with one another in love. Bear with me now. All right. In this list, I'm going to be honest, I struggle with being humble. I've got really strong opinions. I'm kind of an oldest child. My, my brother was six years older, but then I came along and was the oldest so I've got really strong opinions, and like most people, I think I'm right. But I'm praying for God to make me more humble, because that's what Jesus was, and that's what I'm trying to be as a Christian. I don't know, I don't want to be a know-it-all, I really don't. And I know that God has the full picture, and I don't. So I want to consider that another person's view, even if it's different than mine, has some truth to it. So there's a great story to illustrate this. Um, a group, I, I, you might have heard it before. A group of blind men heard that a strange animal called an elephant had been brought to town. They had never seen it, so they went to investigate. So they each 
the five blind men each touched part of the elephant. The first blind, blind man reached out and touched the side of the elephant and said, an elephant is smooth and solid like a wall. That's what an elephant is. It's a wall. The second blind man put his hand on the trunk and said, an elephant is like a giant snake. That makes sense. The third blind man felt the elephant's tusk. He said, no, this creature is as sharp as a spear. And the fourth blind man, the last one, tugged the tail and said, no, this is nothing more than a rope. <laughs> and then they got into an argument. It's a wall. It's a snake. It's a spear. It's a rope. Stop shouting, cried an angry voice. And a wise old ruler stepped forward. He said, how can each of you be so certain that you're the one that's right? The wise ruler said. And the blind man considered this. And because they knew this guy was really wise, they just didn't say anything at all. And he said, this elephant is a very large animal, said the old ruler wisely. Each man touched only one part. Perhaps if you put your parts together, then you'll see the truth. Now let me finish my nap in peace, the guy said. So if an elephant is large and hard to describe from one perspective, how much larger is our God, the creator of the universe, the one that knit us all together and that somehow took the 30, 40 people in this room and made them one? How much larger is our God? As Christians, we have the joy of discovering who God is, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing that we get to figure out our entire life. Who is this God that made me? Who is this God that sends the Holy Spirit to me when I need it? And we also have the joy of representing this God in this world. And I think it is a joy. And you as Christians will each touch, touch a truth of God. You will experience God in your own way, through your own difficulties, your own pain, your own struggles. What you go through, you'll experience God. And if we stay unified, if we stay together, one body, we will understand God more fully together. We'll pull, we'll pull our hearts together like the blind men did, and we'll, we'll understand and represent God more fully. We need each other's different perspectives. We need each other's different gifts. If we're going to handle this big assignment of being Christians and showing God to the world, we need each other. Luckily, we have help. The Holy Spirit is that one spirit that Paul refers to in the text, that one spirit that we all have. It helps us stay unified despite our differences. The Holy Spirit, if we're going to carry the metaphor of the body, is like the nervous system of the body. It brings us unity. It connects us all. If a toe is hurting, then the nerve takes that pain to the brain, and the whole body knows that the toe is in trouble. I think the Holy Spirit works that way. It connects us all. Amen. <laughs> I think when we dismiss each other or think we know better than the other, it's like us putting a rubber band around a finger. I've done that as a kid. It's not, not a good idea. Someone disagrees with me, so I cut them off. I put a rubber band around them. I'm going to ignore them entirely. Now, if someone is dangerous to you, sometimes you do need space. You need to take care of yourself. But I'm talking about when you just disagree. When we cut communication and put the rubber band on, the Holy Spirit still holds us together across that, that gap we've made. It lets the whole body know that the rubber band needs to come off. Um, it lets the whole body know that we need to reunite because the pain is hurting us too. We are all crushed and we need each other to stay connected. On a personal level, when one of us has a loss, we all feel it. Not in the same way as the one closest to the loss, but we know that a part of us, a member of our body, is hurting. And so our hearts feel each other's pain because we're connected. There's a saying that we're all in this together. I'm sure you've heard that. Well, I think it's true. For, for the pain of losing someone, we're all in this together. For... Um, for the pandemic, I believe it's also true. We're all in this together. We realize that we can't be free from the pandemic until we unite and work together to stop the spread. It's also true for the climate crisis, for what's going on. I keep hearing about all the wildfires burning, and we won't be safe on the planet until we're all in this together and decide to pollute less. We're all in this together. In today's scripture, Paul is urging us to unity and also the second part, maturity. Verse 11 mentions that 
So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip the people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. And when I, want, when I read this, I wondered if we were being equipped every week for works of service for the building up of the body of Christ. In a short while, we're going to take a gifts inventory. It's in your bulletin. Uh, if you didn't get it, go back to the spot and get it. Because I think as the body of Christ needs to be built up just like that, we also need to be um, with uh, exercise by works of service. And we all have gifts for this exercise of service. In Corinthians, Paul mentions other gifts, encouragement, service itself. We each have gifts that God has given us for, as the scripture says, the building up of the body of Christ. The building up of the body of Christ reminds me of a bodybuilder exercising. And when we exercise our gifts in the body of Christ for each other and for people that we know, we gain muscle, we gain maturity. Verse 14 says, Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by the winds of every teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming, instead speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Christ is mature. Christ is God. And yet, we're Christ's body. That's something to me. We have not yet reached maturity ourselves, and I think of my baby when I hear this. When she was even tinier than she is now, her head was way more mature than her body. You could tell that she was frustrated because she wanted to go over there. Her head was mature and ready to go there, but she needed us to carry her body. Her body was just kind of flapping around in the beginning. Um, and she couldn't move to the thing that she wanted. So I think Christ is asking us to gain maturity, to be one, because Christ sees that thing in the world Christ sees that person that needs Jesus in their life and, and says, take me there, you know, be, be my body, take me there. In verse 15, it says, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect that mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. Now, the word love appears in today's scripture three important times. Bear with one another in love speak the truth with love, and the body grows and builds itself up in love. Remember in Matthew 22, as Jesus was being questioned about the rules and truths of the faith, someone asked him, what's the greatest commandment in the law? And his response, we all know, was love. He told them, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment our teacher, our Savior, Jesus said. And he goes on and says, The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Love God with all of everything and love your neighbor as yourself. If we are going to be united, we must bear with one another's different perspectives with love. If we are going to share our own truth, the truth of the gospel of Jesus, we must do it with love. If we are going to grow and be built up and attain the fullness of Christ to be that mature body that God wants us to be, then we must learn to unite in love. It's kind of the, the, secret, the secret ingredient. It's that simple. Let's respect our differences, stay united, and stay loving because God is love. And if you remember nothing else, remember this. Jesus gave his body to make you part of his body. Jesus gave his body to make you a part of Jesus' body. And so whatever you're going through, you have people in this church to go through it with you. Like bones and muscles, you are connected to the people of God. Your pain is our pain. When one of us hurts, we all hurt. And we look out for each other. Tell us what's going on, and we can pray and bring it to the head of our body that is Jesus, our Savior. Whatever you're going through, you are surrounded by love. You may think that people in this room barely know what's, what's happening in your life. We're not living it. We don't know. But we know that we have one God, and God knows. 
Jesus has taught us how to take care of each other like we're taking care of ourselves, just like in that scripture. We love us. We love each other. We love you. So tell us how we can care for you this week. Even if you don't believe it, Jesus has loved you and made you part of this great body. When Jesus died for you and me, Jesus gave you a place to belong, a body to belong with. Jesus gave you a family who loves you. Jesus gave you a part in his loving body. Won't you say yes to that? If you haven't accepted Jesus as your Savior, say yes. Say, I want to be part of that body. It's here for you. It's freely given. In closing, today's scripture ends by reminding us that our oneness comes from Jesus, that we are joined and held together, and that we're building our body up and growing with love, as each of us does our our part in doing the body's work. Verse 16 kind of summarizes this. From him, Jesus, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. To be growing and building each other up, we must understand where we fit, what part we play. So in just a second, um, we're asking you to take this little survey for you to reflect on your gifts of who you are, what part you have to play in this body. Uh, It's also up on the screen. Uh, If Andrew puts it up there, you can go on your browser and just fill it out on your phone um, if you don't have a pen uh, or pencil um, to do it in the bulletin. Uh, Andrew, do you mind putting up the bit.ly, the the screen with the little www one? I know that many of you are wary to fill out another. I'm sure you've already done a gift survey uh, if you've been in the church for more than like a year. Um, And some of you might be wary to fill out another one um, because I know you're already busy. Um, And if if you share your gifts, you're worried that you'll be forced to do another ministry and you're already doing ministries. You feel like you can't say no uh, if the pastor asks me, if asks you, are you, I saw you put this on your survey. Um, you know, it's hard to say no. And so you're not going to put anything on it. But I promise you this won't happen. I promise I won't corner you. I promise you that you're not signing up for anything in this. Uh, we are in a period as a church of deciding what ministries to offer in the fall. We kind of take a step back in the summer, um, and then September rolls around. The kids go back to school. Uh, we're all in the swing of it. So we're in this period of discernment, of prayer, of figuring out what our ministries are as Norwood. And so anything you put on the survey will be for all of us to consider what ministries capture the most of our gifts, because the body needs every part. The body needs us. It can't just be one, one body part. So, And I promise it'll be up to you to opt into the ministry um, And I, again, I I won't uh, count this as you signing up for anything. My hope is that actually you find something fun and extracurricular to do that also spreads uh, God's love. So I know I want to start fishing, and I don't know what you want to start doing, what that thing in you um, God has placed. Um, But think about it for a second. And then your assignment this week is to find someone who has a similar interest, who you know loves that thing too, and talk to them. Hey, could we do this you know, with younger people or with older people or with the church? Uh, that's kind of the idea. Um, I know Joan actually did the assignment the other day because she came up to me before. Um, so I like, I like hearing that. If, if, you, if you end up doing things, tell me a story about it. So um, I'm going to give you five minutes now. Uh, Sharon is going to play a beautiful thing. Uh, we can fill this out together. Um, And don't leave before you fill it out, because then we're going to pray and and kind of bless this time together. On the screen, it's actually easier if you go on your phone just to go to the bit.ly, www.bitly.com. I'll get with Andrew to figure it out. But um, does anyone have pens and papers to fill it out in their bulletin? Let's take a few minutes to fill it up. 